Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Shaw here, ready to go for the media, politics, and you. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about the media, how it affects American government, and what role it plays um, in just affecting public opinion in general. In order to do that, though, I'm going to have to teach you about public opinion and how do people come up with what they believe. So let's do it. All right, so what are political attitudes? And that's really where we're going to need to start today. So the definition of a political attitude is just an individual's view about public policies, political parties, candidates, government institutions, and public officials. So as you can tell, it covers a lot of things. The biggest thing to take away is it's just kind of how people feel about what's going on in our, in our country, in our world right now. Political attitudes evolve throughout our lives from an infinite number of sources, and also they are very malleable and very changeable throughout our lives. Again, you're going to start um, with the people in your lives are going to help you to determine what your political attitudes are. For example, your family, your friends, community, neighbors, the media, etc. Okay, most of you or a lot of you probably have a similar political ideas, uh, ideals, or attitudes to your parents because those are the first people that you learn political attitudes from. Um, but there's all kinds of other stuff too that that goes into it. Again, as you age, as you you know you know go to college or you know go to a trade school or you start and you join the workforce, like your political attitudes are going to change as you become you know your own self-sufficient adult. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit later. The other things that are going to determine your political attitudes are going to be your age, your race, your income, occupation, your residence. Again, there's all kinds of other things that go into it. Again, for example, um, when you talk about age, young people tend to be, uh, you know, liberal, and as they age, they tend to become more conservative. Okay, um, for race, uh, whites tend to be more conservative, and minorities tend to be more liberal. Again, that's just kind of how it, it always breaks down, and we'll talk more about that in class. Um, but that just know that those are, are huge factors that are involved in determining political attitudes of, of the people. Also, the places that you are, school, work, your hobbies, church, etc., all of these things are going to help you know, determine, de determine how you feel about what's going on. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, parent influence is the biggest determinant. Research shows people often favor the same political party as their parents. So again, that might not be true for you now, but again, usually, uh, you know, because again, you, as you age, you kind of adopt a lot of the same, uh, you know, beliefs as your parents. So again, that's just, it's a huge, huge factor. Um, even if you d disagree with your parents, they do a, a they, they play a huge role in that kind of helping you to determine what you, what you believe and what's important to you. Okay, so now that we've talked about political attitudes, let's talk about public opinion. So the definition of public opinion is the expressed interest or concern of a significant amount of the general public or common issue or on common issues at a particular point in time. Uh, and again, remember what you should know is that the public is not always everyone all the time. It's really just a majority of people. So um, again, it really, it, it, at the end of the day, it's how a majority of people feel about, um, you know, what's going on in, in our country. And so uh, it's really like this is a lot more uh, changeable and like this is a lot more like fl it fluctuates a lot more than political attitudes do because this has to do with like current events and, and what people feel about what's going on. So like right now, Russia's invading Ukraine. Okay. And so how do people feel about that? And so they're going to put, they're going to poll people. They're going to see how people feel. How should President Biden respond? How should Congress respond, et cetera? And they're going to get an idea of what the public opinion is about, uh, you know, the, the crisis in Ukraine. So I kind of already got into how they measure public opinion. I mentioned polling earlier. Um, again, this is really the biggest way that you you know what Amer Americans are thinking. Uh, there's you know 330 Americans, uh, you know, like or right around there right now, um, and it's really inefficient to ask every single one of them how they feel. So what they do is they take public opinion polls, and so they're going to just they're collecting information. They're going to uh, take a sample of the population. They might ask you know say. I don't know, uh, 5,000 people, how they feel. Again, the more people they ask, the better. Um, but they're, again, they're, they're not going to ask, you know, 330 million. And just because that's, like I said, that's going to take forever. So again, they're going to gather information through these polls. Again, they're going to use uh, the uh, Gallup and the Pew Research Center are two really good, um, really reliable, um, like, 
polling places or polling companies. Um, what you should know, though, is that polls in general are really not reliable. Um, it like it, it, and that's again, and like, uh, so are they reliable? Yes, like the, the the major national polls offer reliable guides to public thought, but. The, what you need to understand about that is that not everybody takes polls. Like there is, you know, you can, there's all kinds of different ways that they are going to pull people. Like they can call you, they can ask you, send you an email, they can, you know, uh, go to your house if you want. Like, I mean, there's just all, all kinds of things that they can do, but not everybody's going to answer those questions. So, uh, so like you need to, I guess, take the results of a public opinion poll with a grain of salt. Don't take them as fact, take them as you know, just a maybe a snapshot of information of what maybe a majority uh, or a decent amount of Americans might believe uh, at this point in time. Uh, oh, and sorry, I, I wanted to, this was just emphasizing here again, the, it's the expressed interest again of a significant amount of the general public at a particular point in time again. So just make sure you might want, might want to just put some emphasis there on, um, on those, those, th those three areas. Okay, so now mass media. So the mass media, and again, I need you to really like be careful here because I, like we ha since the creation of you know Twitter and Facebook and things like that, now kids get really con confused with like between mass media and social media. So it's different. Um, and mass media is really any medium used as a means of popular communication. And again, that's that is really confusing because again, that also still sounds like social media. Um, so really, there's two two categories here. There's print media and there's digital media. Uh, print media is going to be newspapers, magazines, books, public radio, et cetera. Public radio might be able to fall under the digital media. Again, it's kind of a, you know, one, one of them in, that is in between. Uh, digital media includes television, the internet, podcasts, et cetera. Okay, um, and these are what I'm referring to when I say mass media. Okay, again, when I'm not talking about you know social media like Instagram or things like that. Um, it's just the again, basically, how do people get information? Um, at least, or, or at least like the the most reliable information. I guess social media does have things like that, but it's not really. Most people don't get their their information or their news from you know like a Instagram or TikTok or something. Uh, again, really sh quick uh, side note here, you need to know about journalistic ethics. So um, all of these people that work for, you know, whether it's print or digital media, they are really journalists and um, they have they have these ethics in place that are guidelines for responsible reporting. Um, all all uh, media is going to have some bias. Um, again, bias itself is not negative. It's not a bad thing. Everybody is biased. Again, all that all it means is that people are taking their own, they're t they're taking what they're learning and they are using their own, you know, experiences and their own beliefs to affect how they feel and how they are going to report that information. So journalistic ethics is basically just that you you need to report you know re report truthfully you need to like you can't you know no slander no libel things like that um, and uh, again you you need to keep your sources safe uh, you know all all kinds of stuff like that um, I'll, obviously as I said like nearly all media outlets have a degree of bias or slant. Um, and that has increased since like the 1950s with the Fairness doct Doctrine, which was repealed in 1987. So the Fairness Doctrine was a policy that required the holders of broadcast licenses to both to both present controversial issues of public importance and to do so in a manner that was honest, equitable, and balanced. But that was repealed in 1987, and that is what has now increased the uh, the, the the differences and the polarization between the Fox Newses of the world and the MSNBCs of the world. Um, and again, that is now now it's our job to really detect the bias on our own, and that is a little bit more difficult. But we're going to kind of get into how to do that. Okay, so how does mass media shape public opinion? So now uh, there's going to be a couple different things that they're going to do here, and you're just going to I'm going to kind of go over all of them, and I'll kind of talk about what this all means and how it all works together. Uh, so the first thing you need to understand is that the media outlet themselves they have their own ideology. So most media uh, outlets have a general political ideology. Like Fox News is like is very conservative, MSNBC very liberal. CNN, New New York Times, they they have, tend to lean more liberally. Um, 
but again, they all they, that that is their uh, like their own bias, they, and that is their own ideology. Remember that these are are all private companies. There's really not there's only a few um, sources out there that are not actually private companies, and one, like one of them being like NPR, National Public Radio. Um, and so the main goal of these companies is to make money. And so the way to do that is to, you know, attract the most viewership that they can. And the way they do that is by really trying to target people who have similar ideologies to the company themselves. So uh, the second thing is the commercial incentive. Again, as this is, as I, as I mentioned, some outlets may be biased toward primary investors. Again, the people that donate money to the company, they are, are going, probably not going to show that in a negative light or show those people in a negative light or show those companies in a negative light. Um, so that definitely could, that definitely impacts, um, you know, what they are, are showing and what they're going to be uh, broadcasting, which is going to affect the public opinion of the viewership. Uh, the opinion leaders, uh, also known as pundits, are uh, influential people who share public opinion via mass media. Uh, Tar Tucker Carlson is a very famous one for Fox News. Uh, Rachel Maddow is a very famous one for uh, for MSNBC. Wolf Blitzer for CNN. Again, these are just people who are are, are you know very popular among their viewership, and uh, people watch to kind of see what these people think about what's going on in, the, in our world right now. Uh, Micro-targeting is next, also known as narrowcasting. This is as opposed to broadcasting. Again, before 1987, um, like, and really still now today, we still have like broadcasting companies, like you think of NBC, CBS, the B literally stands for broadcasting. Like they provide a wide range of, of material, a wide range of content to their viewers. But now we're really looking at narrowcasting, and like that is that's with the rise of like cable TV, uh, you know, CNN, the Fox News, is the MSNBCs. They are just narrowly ta tailoring um, their content just for a specific group of people. They're not trying to get a broad range of viewership. They just are saying, "Hey, we know what we want. The, this is for." And again, I don't know how much they would like admit this publicly, but they they know specifically what who their their group that they are targeting is, and that is who their content is tailored toward. And that's what it says here: content specifically selected for an individual or group based on a digital footprint. Um, and so that's why, like, if you if you click on like a CNN or something like that, and then you go to a different page, you might actually you know see an an ad for CNN later, or ad for you know maybe more liberal ideas um, you know later on, uh, you know because that that is you know your digital footprint, and then you can kind of you know the internet now can be used to tailor that much more easily. Uh, although that does have a lot of privacy concerns that we don't have time to get into. Uh, the filter bubble phenomenon uh, is the uh, idea that social media reinforces beliefs of users through algorithms that personalize an individual's online experience, and that was kind of what I got into right there. Again, I'm not super worried about you uh, knowing that that right now in respect of mass media, but that also is a uh, like an idea that is very problematic now. Uh, like, for example, if you only click on, you know, conservative things on Facebook or Instagram, like you're going to keep, it's going to keep giving you like, uh, you know, conservative ideas and you're not going to really see the other side. Okay. Same thing for liberalism. Like it's just not going to happen. And so that's just really a big issue um, that we're really kind of just, it's coming to the forefront right now. Uh, this is going to be uh, kind of like a, a general viewpoint of where um, where most uh, of the the things, uh, most of the the different types of uh, of news sources fall. Again, you see uh, like the Associated Press, ABC. Again, trying to like they're very neutral or balanced. Uh, like New York Post, maybe leaning a little bit to the right. Again, as you move further to the right here, again, you see OAN, like Fox News. Again, those are going to be much further to the right. And again, kind of less like less reliable than others. Again, uh, like MSNBC, you see like as like CNN's over here. Uh, CNN's on here twice. I'm not sure why. Um, but yeah, you see, again, this is just in general, the uh, kind of where they tend to fall, and then like, as their like as as their bias increases, you see kind of like it forms a triangle. As the the amount of bias increases, the reliability decreases. Okay, so that is tend tends to uh, tends to happen pretty much uh, pretty much everywhere. 
Okay, and again, that was just what I was showing here. Again, their political bias. Again, this is just going to be on the political spectrum, and then their overall reliability. Okay, so how to improve your own media literacy. So the first thing you should do is you should diversify your media sources. Again, if you are the type of person that only uses one thing for your, like one source for your, your information, you should probably kind of mix it up a little bit. You know, check, if you're going to check a, a Fox News, check a CNN every once in a while. If you're going to check an MSNBC, maybe look at the, you know, the New York Times every once in a while and just kind of see um, how, how different, you know, different sources are going to engage you differently. Uh, you definitely want to look for credibility. We're going to talk about this a little bit more in class. Again, misinformation and disinformation um, are a really big problem now. And again, you're not really going to see that from the major news sources. They are going to like, yes, they are biased, but that's not necessarily like that's not the same thing as misinformation and disinformation. That's really a bigger, bigger problem because of social media now. You also want to pay attention to language. Again, adjectives are a window into author's opinion. Again, uh, like like Fox News is really, really guilty of this. A lot of times they will use like specific adjectives to describe uh, like liberal politicians uh, like negatively and then uh, like like and then more positive language or more positive adjectives for conservative politicians. And again, it's the same for if you you know go to MSNBC, it's going to be the kind of the ex exact same thing just in reverse. Um, and. Uh, numbers don't lie right. Again, one statistic is one piece of a 2,000 part puzzle. Again, it you, you really need any any stat, any statistic that you find, any story that you find, you want to make sure that you're not just, you know, spitting that back out at people. You want to verify those things, uh, you know, double check, triple check. Because uh, again, that's kind of the world we live in now where people are trying to misinform others, unfortunately. And uh, that's we're going to have to deal with that as American citizens. Um, again, seven types of, of misinformation and disinformation. You guys don't need to, uh, to, to, uh, to get this down. I just wanted to kind of show it to you, uh, the different types. Again, I don't even really, I'm, I'm not going to test you on this. Um, it's just, uh, gonna, it's just going to be inf information that is good for, for you guys to know. Again, ty different types of misinformation, satire or parody. Uh, there's no intention to cause harm, but has the potential to fool you. Uh, that's going to be like the, 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 the infotainment, like the comedians that are, are also giving news. Misleading content, imposter content. Again, that's when genuine sources are impersonated. Fabricated content is when new content is 100% false uh, that is designed to deceive and do harm. That's really getting into like libel here. False connections is when, when headlines, visuals, or captions don't support the actual content. That's kind of like clickbait. Uh, false content, again, kind of still with, with fabricated content there. Uh, and then manipulated content is going when they kind of shift things around or they, they you know, change it in such a way that it doesn't seem quite as bad or, or as good. Uh, again, you want to try also to kind of develop an enlightened attitude. Uh, I, the idea here is that news outlets exist to help consumers form their own opinions, and this is often forgotten. Again, it, we we think of them as you know the end all be all uh, of of information, but really, like we want to we we need to use what they're saying, and we need to kind of take that with us, and we need to kind of think about what how do I feel about this? A lot of people now they just watch like a like a CNN or a Fox News or an MSNBC, and they're like oh, this is how I should feel about this. And they just repeat back what uh, the news source tells them instead of really kind of thinking about how they actually feel and, uh, and kind of going from there. Again, you want to avoid adopting a political attitude of others because it's just easier. Again, it's important to have difficult conversations. And if you, if you see people getting frustrated, you want to try to make sure you keep it light, keep it calm. Uh, because again, having those difficult conversations of people with different political attitudes is really what's going to make us better as, uh, as individuals. Uh, and, and also, you want to harvest useful information, sew it all together to form a tapestry of opinion that is enlightened and informed. Again, guys, most people don't fall left or right. They're somewhere in the middle. And again, most of that is going, you're going to need to, you, you are probably the exact same way or you will be later uh, in your life. And so that it's important to kind of, like, like as you learn, as you grow, um, to, you know, make sure you are complete, forming a complete picture of what your political attitudes are. And that's not going to fit into any one category very easily. Okay, real, real quick here, just last thought, main points, uh, political attitudes are constantly evolving throughout our lifetimes and are influenced by many factors. Public opinion also evolves over time, but is generally influenced through the efforts of mass media and also it tends to be more specific to, you know, one point in time. 
uh, or small, shorter parts, points in time. Mass media has a vast ability to influence political attitudes, public opinion, and the public agenda. Again, really, that becomes public policy and the laws that are passed. And it is the responsibility of the individual to reach an enlightened political attitude. Guys, I took up 20 minutes of your time. I appreciate you hanging out with me. I'll see you in the next video.